Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Hi, you okay? Thank you for having us. I know. It's been a while. I can't quite remember exactly when you were last on the show, or first on the show, but I'm definitely very excited to have you back today because I know a lot has changed and we've got some really exciting stuff that we're going to talk to our listeners about today, about you guys and something that we're for the first time going to be sort of offering out to the community. So I'm super excited about that. But let's just assume for a second that there are a few of our listeners that didn't listen to your first podcast and haven't been following you guys on social media. Joe, can you just give us a bit of a recap about what you guys are doing in the property space? Yeah, so I can't really remember where we were up to at the time, but we've got 256 rooms now, turning over about 30k a month, uh, two full-time staff members and a big new office. Wow. I think last time we definitely didn't have staff, you know, our turnover, and just for the benefit of our listeners, I'm saying some of this because I have the context and the, the benefit of knowing your business really well because obviously we work together and we, you know, I, I've mentored you for a while now. So if I if I remember rightly, I don't think we had any staff. I think we were we were still quite early stages, but things were definitely moving quickly, and there was a lot of sort of scrabbling about, thinking, okay, this is actually getting pretty serious <laughs> pretty quickly, and it was really exciting. But things have just continued at kind of a lightning pace. So I'm really excited to get you back on the show, talk to you guys about rent to rent. For the benefit of all of our listeners rent rent's a bit of a theme for us at the minute um like i said we're going to talk about something really exciting that we've got that we're going to be releasing out to the community very soon but um let's just kind of rewind a little bit so you guys are based in liverpool and your sort of business is predominantly management but you've got a lot of rent rent stuff that you've got in that portfolio as well and most of it correct me if i'm wrong guys but most of that now is students we've gone through a bit of a transition yeah. A lot of professional stuff, moving a lot of it to student stuff, but there's still a good blend in there. Yeah. And it's growing very, 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 very fast. Just moving <laughs> into a new office. Let's take a step back, you know, even before that. Rent to rent, it's got a bit of a reputation out there. There are definitely people who, who probably haven't done it in the right way. And there are some great examples. You guys are one of the best that, that I'm aware of. And I love working with you, but you're one of the best examples of how to do it right. But I'm really interested in why you chose rent to rent in the first place. Take us back to that decision. Why did you decide to start a rent to rent business? Rent to rent for us was something which we, you know, at the time we'd managed to save in our job and we always knew we were going to put it into something. And that something would be property. You know, we explored buy to let, we explored maybe buying a property, refurbishing it, refinancing it. But at the time we wanted something that we could put kind of the capital that we had into something that would generate the cash flow that we needed at the time to be able to, you know, for our long-term goals, that was certainly the solution that we knew would get us there a lot quicker than a lot of other, a lot of other models, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was reoccurring income was the main target for us at the time. The situation that we were in, probably similar to very a lot of other people's, is, is where you need the cash flow quickly to leave your current circumstances and switch into something else, and that was exactly what it done for us. I mean, our listeners can go back if they haven't listened to the first episode that we did together. We went into a bit more detail of, I suppose, that the kind of the circumstances that you guys were, were working around, your jobs and, and that transition and the, sort of the COVID involvement and things like that. So that, that story is all there, that background. But with this sort of decision to, to move into rent to rent then, was it something that you'd, had you seen it? Had you been on a course? How, how were you even aware of rent to rent Yeah, just listening to... Business property podcast. The HMO podcast, did you say then, Joe? Okay. <laughs> Just okay. listening to the HMO podcast. Of course. Um, <laughs> as much free content as we could get and doing all of that, we heard a lot about rent to rent And when we heard about it, it was almost like that's kind of what we're looking for. So at the time, we just we just went for it after we did a little bit of a course. And then, and then we ended up getting going quite quickly, didn't we? Yeah, we had that time to learn everything we needed to know about it and also that time to put into it at first because at the start we were so hands-on which is exactly what this model needs isn't it but I think we had that time and it just fit so well with where we were and the stage of our life and we just thought you know that just suits us perfectly and I think even today you know it started off as kind of just being a stepping stone for us but it's opened so many doors and led us to so many amazing opportunities it's led us to grow the agency now that we want to grow and I think what started as a little bit of a stepping stone like I said has, has, has led to where we are today. And I think it'll be a massive part of our business forever, really. Just picking up on something you said then, Liv, you know, it, it's opened a huge number of doors, lots of opportunities. 
And I, I love that about rent to rent. You know, for me, building a rent to rent business opened those doors. It, it led to you know, partnerships with other people, opportunities to buy things, great relationships with landlords, which became other opportunities. And I think for anyone who's really serious and it kind of really knows that they want to build a HMO portfolio, rent to rent isn't just a great way to actually build some cash flow if you, if you do it right. We'll come on to what's involved and, and, and it's not, you know, we know it's not easy. But it folds in really well to buying assets and actually developing your own portfolio, which for many of us will take a little bit more time because we've got got to create that capital. We've got to kind of accrue that capital somehow. So either from a business or from, from um, maybe an inheritance or, you know, from savings or a combination of all sorts of things. Your long term goals, then give us an idea of what they, they are. I remember this conversation when we first got together and when we started our mentorship. And that's always a big part of how I like to kick my mentorship programs off. You know, what do you guys want to achieve long term? Where do you want to go with this, all of this property stuff? You know, what, what do those long term goals look like for you guys now? Initially, our long-term goals was obviously to lead into bigger things whereby you're buying properties, converting them, creating our own, you know, HMOs. Obviously, rent is a great model, but you don't actually own the asset. So that was more of a long-term goal when we first started off. Now being actually in the business, you know, we, we made the decision last year to, well, probably our second property made us fall into the home management side of it all. And we've now decided we want to grow a HMO a management agency so we've got 50 50 probably in our business of rent to rent and managed properties and i think now our goals have slightly changed we still do want to develop and buy our own hmos but we now have bigger goals where we want to grow the agency even bigger than which which rent to rent has, has pretty much helped us get there hasn't it yeah and also part of that is, is like you say buying assets and i think mm -hmm. i kind of look at it and think if i wanted to go into buying properties and hmos now the knowledge we've gained from rent to rent compared to if someone had all the money but yeah. no knowledge, it, it's so different. And Absolutely. You know, I've banged on about this for ages, but it's much easier to buy assets when you've got a really good cash flowing business. And if that cash flowing business happens to be pretty much what you want to go on and do, you want to buy those types of assets. It's just so much easier. I remember having this conversation with you guys and really, you know, I, I absolutely get the desire to buy assets and actually have our own own stock. But I think one of the things that we've done really well, and, and hopefully I've played a role in this, but is to kind of get you guys to see, and, and other people as well that I work with, that actually it doesn't really matter where the cash comes from. If you've got a good business, a really good business that you can walk away from, you've got staff, systems, operations, processes in, that is as good as any asset. That business in itself is an asset. And, and what I love and what we've talked about and what we've worked about and what we're going to talk about today is the scalability of that which yeah. building your own portfolio just doesn't doesn't offer. It's much harder to scale up your own portfolio. Rent to rent businesses, as you've already hinted at, it's much easier to scale things up. So, Liv, if we you know take a step sort of beyond those sort of initial thoughts and ideas of, of getting started, when you guys had decided to to actually get started, what did you do? You know, and I, I speak to a lot of people at this stage. It's a great idea. I love the idea of doing it, but then it, they don't really know how to actually get started. You know, where did you, you set the company up? You, how do you decide where to do it? Not all of that stuff. So how did you guys actually, I suppose, put pen to paper and, and get to work? Well, at the time we were working from home. Um, it was during lockdown. I think it, yeah, it was the first lockdown. Um, so we coming out of that and we just spend every hour we possibly could learning all about it and we just thought right this is it you know we need to go for it and we looked everywhere um you know we spoke to local agents which obviously as we know now um you know is one of the ways where you can find properties but that wasn't you know we didn't find our property our first property through that way it was um, agencies it was just right move every portal we could possibly look where a house was on there you know that's where we were looking and quite funny enough we found um our very first house on gumtree uh, which was crazy and since today we've you know we haven't even looked there since it, it's crazy but that was where we found our first house and i think it was just more so looking everywhere we possibly could um and that's 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 how we done it wasn't it yeah it was about at the time we need a property let's look everywhere where any landlord could be advertising their house and let's just explore every single avenue and then you'd get the house fill it and you'd stop marketing now that's changed and i probably wouldn't advise to do the same again but 
that's not how we started. It was kind of like so quick, wasn't yeah. it? Find, find the fit and then we'd stop and then we'd go again. Whereas now it is slightly different. You know, we're always more and we're always looking. But back then it was like, look as hard as we can get and as hard as we can, sorry. And then the minute we get the house, it lets us go for it. Right. Yeah, I think the analogy is you guys just put loads of rods in the water. <laughs> you know, you went fishing, but you know, you took a dozen rods with you. And that is a great example of actually, the further you can cast your net, the wider your net is, the bigger your net, you know, the more likely you are to actually pull some fish in. And you guys did do that. And I know it wasn't easy. Just just for a bit of context here, when, when you did get started, and I know that this is something a lot of people think about, but how much money did you have? You know, what did you have aside to actually build this business and take on the deals? I think we started with about 15k yeah um the first refurb was 10k it was supposed to be about five or seven <laughs> ended up being 10 um but it was a really good deal at the time so it made sense still and we put a, a lot of time ourselves into making sure the money went as far as it possibly could and it was and um, today it's still one of our best deals you know it, it's still the biggest hmo we've ever had it was a 10 bedroom it was humongous, you know, we have family and friends telling us don't do it, you know, get something a little bit smaller. And I think we just knew straight away that like, no matter what, we were going to put the time in because it, it, it isn't easy. Mm. And you have got it, you have got it absolutely graphs. And that's exactly what we've done. But I think the start, we were just chasing the nose every no we got, it was like, right, okay, well, a yes is coming soon. And when that yes come, we just ran with it. And we just, you know, with the help and the knowledge that we gained, you know, we, we were able to go for it. Um, well, well, that's actually something that I, I want to ask you about, which is how did we go from there then to where we are now? And I think you've hinted at a few things, which is you know, a, lo a lot of really, really hard work. Um, before you answer that, though, just just want to highlight something then. So, Joe, you said you guys started with with 15,000 quid, mm. not not a huge amount of money. And when we kicked off today's episode, you guys said you're doing about 30 grand a month at the minute. And I just want to just say how incredible that is. I mean, that for me is so exciting. Just a great example of the scalability of this. In a prime postcode, you know, your properties, now, I know you've worked incredibly hard, but that that is some feat, you know, t turning 15,000 quid into 30 grand a month. I know there's expenses and things things like that. There's lots of costs to consider, but that that is really fantastic. And I think shows what is possible. Not everybody can and will achieve that. There's a lot involved, but I think that that, you know, is just a great example. Tell us then, Joe, about what, what has been involved. You know, what's been involved in going from finding that first deal to where we are now? How many rooms did you say, Joe? 200 and... Two, five, six. Yeah. 256 rooms. A lot of rooms, two members of staff, a second office, <laughs> cars, all of this stuff. What have you guys had to do, if you were being really honest, to get here? I think... What we do now compared to what we've done at the very beginning was market and we don't turn that off now. That's every single month we market and there's, there's so many different funnels now where we can get leads or deals through that we can always rely on one if we need a deal kind of thing. But I think as well, there's been a few like leapfrog moments or quite a lot of them where you almost feel like you're at one level and then you're at level five and then you just keep leapfrogging through different moments of taking big risks that end up paying off because we have got people like you that we can lean on in certain moments, and I think that's kind of paid its dues now. Absolutely. Yeah, I, that that risk thing, and you said something, Liv, and I was just thinking about risk. The first HMO, it's a 10 bed, you know, you hadn't done one. That is a big risk, giving a big guarantee to someone. It's going to be a, a steep learning curve, but do you guys think, I mean, I certainly do, but do you guys think that that is a really important part of this model? Like, I actually think that when I did my talk at the HMO Awards last year, one of the things that I talked about, you know, I'd seen this in some of the very best examples of the businesses that I'd seen be built in our industry. And one of the things was that I'd noticed that these people who built these businesses had a fairly high tolerance to risk, a very mm -hmm. sensible and logical approach to risk, but absolutely had that, that tolerance for that risk. Cause there is a point where you've just got to take that leap of faith. You can do all the training, you can do all the work, you can do all of the planning, but at some point you've got to step off the edge. And that is a scary moment especially at the very beginning do you guys think that would you guys credit part of what you've done you know with the fact that you know you are prepared to take a risk you are you know you are prepared to stick your neck out absolutely i think a big part of rent to rent is about taking that risk because ultimately you're taking on you know 
sometimes a really run down property and you are guaranteeing in the thousands every single month you know for five years it's a lot and it can seem scary but if you've got the right knowledge the right people around you you're asking the right questions to get the right answers before making those decisions you know once you've taken that risk once and then you start getting deal two deal three it doesn't seem as much as a, of a risk um, but I think sometimes you've just got to go for it and we've always said you know you've got to have that one house mentality with service to the landlord you know the refurbishment quality the service to your tenants and ultimately we got from property one two three four five six purely by word of mouth and that was due to the level of quality service and refurbishment that we done on on our very first one but yeah back to risk it's it's definitely you know you've got to be prepared to take that risk but know what you're going to do and obviously without a risk yeah you're so right and, and i think a lot of this and what, what we're doing and taking on rent to rent deals it is quite controllable it is actually quite predictable i know one of the things i'm a real stickler for the numbers and, and I, I one of the things that i've seen a lot of people do and ultimately fail you know when it comes to rent to rent is underestimate what it actually costs to run hmos they you know, actually forget to factor in the the, the repair and maintenance costs you know sensible voids yeah. um what happens and could happen with with bills and i've always been really clear i like to have that 200 pound net sort of margin per room if you've got a five bed it's a thousand pounds and and in covid i saw a lot of examples of people who'd been operating businesses on much much slimmer margins and of course when covid happened a lot of those tenants moved out certainly in london and that three or four hundred pound that they were making a month suddenly disappeared and then they owe more than they're making on the property and that's a real problem um, but it's very predictable if you know how and you understand why. And you also have, I think to some extent, and again, I don't know whether you guys agree with this. I'm sure you do, but you need the confidence in what you're doing. You have to have an element of self-belief. If I keep sending the letters, if I keep you know, calling them, you know, if I keep doing the right thing in the right place, in the right way, you know, the phone will ring and we will get deals. I like the analogy of um, it's two miners and the mining of one above the other and, and the mining for gold and, and one, they're both, you know, a very short distance away from it. They've been mining for ages and they're a really short distance away from it, you know, and then another swing of the pickaxe and they'll get it. And, you know, one of them turns around at that point and says, I've had enough, it's clearly not here. And, and the other guy, you know, just one more swing and he, and he gets the gold. And I often think rent to rent is a bit like that as well. I think that a lot of people underestimate the time that it can take to actually get to a level where you are making money, where you, yeah. you ha you, you've you got the confidence to say, yeah, this is working, I'm doing it right. You know, we are bringing on deals consistently. You know, it doesn't just happen because you want it to happen. You guys must have had times when you, you know, you were worried about whether or not you were doing the right thing, whether or not it was gonna to be too difficult. I mean, yeah. did you have those times and those moments and when did it start to change? You know, when did you have that sort of self-belief that no, no, this this is working and this is gonna be quite special? I think as you start to gain more properties and more tenants and see how quickly we, we were able to fill the rooms, you kind of, the real life example was almost the confidence to give to us that we knew exactly what we were doing and we were doing it quicker than agents and landlords in the area. So. Straight away, we were like, well, what are we doing here? That's a bit, little bit different. But definitely in the early days with the first couple of properties, we were still in lockdowns and things like that. So obviously it, it was super slow, but I think the benefit for us at the time, we didn't know any difference and we just yeah. thought that was the way it was. Yeah. So when we came out of that, we were like, wow, we can fill these rooms even quicker. Yeah. Um, and then since then. Because we were spending, you know, at the time, I think the spare room advert, you had to bid to get to the very top and we were spending... I think we spent about £500 on spare room and we just thought that, that was absolutely normal. And there was a point where we were thinking, oh my goodness, we've just refurbished, we've just spent over £10,000 on this refurbishment. We pay for a lot of things which now we wouldn't pay, you know, we'd, we'd pass it on to the landlord. But that at the time when we'd done that refurbishment, we were spending that much money on the advertising. There was a bit of a moment where we were like, oh my goodness, this has got to work. But we did have that drive and determination to do it and then we filled it, we refurbished it in six weeks. And I think after that, then we knew, right, okay, we're on to something here. Well, I mean, drive and determination is something that is in abundance with, with you guys. And that's one of the reasons why I love working with you. You go away and you put so much work and you just grind away to get results and you get results. And it's great to see because I, you know, I think that that is what is required. That's what I did. And it wasn't a sort of a, 
you know, send some letters out, put my feet up, and and the, and the deals will come come rolling in. No, it was it was hard work. Lots of lots of no's, lots of no's, um, bending over backwards to sort of appease landlords and make budget stretch and and you know and and get tenants in in ridiculous time frames just to get the properties up and monetize. But I I found it really really exciting. I mean, for you guys. Liv, what do you think you guys have done differently and what has it been involved to, to get you? I want to come back around to that question. You know, how have you been able to get from where we were, that idea, that concept, sort of that idea that you know was just conceived to where we are now? 256 rooms at 30 grand a month. You know, what what have you guys done that you think most haven't or don't know how to or aren't prepared to do? Well, I would say, and I don't know whether you think any different, but I, I'm kind of overall a tenant side of things. And I think one thing that we've always done from day one is the care that we put into the tenants. And we've always thought, if we cared about these tenants as much as you would care about got the family members, like I love the tenants like the my own children. But I mean, I think with the tenants, you know, we cared about them so much. We want to make... They, you know, everyone's got that stigma, oh, it's just a rent, they'll put any old furniture in there, you know, they'll ruin it anyway, oh, the students do this, the students do that, and we're so not under that mindset, we're under the mindset of give them a nice house and they'll respect your property, and I think that's something which we've done different from day one, you know, we've had that care for the, the houses, you know, we've told landlords, look what we'll do to your house, you know, we haven't skimped on the design, you know, we've spent a lot of money creating these amazing houses for these for the, for the tenants, and ultimately, that kind of trickles down, you know, to the landlords as well we've always thought you know make these houses a house where a tenant wants to live and the landlord will want you to have their houses i think that's that's what i'd say yeah and i think from from my point of view with the landlords where the mouth been in the early days one of our biggest lead generators and we always say like it's it's not easy but you can get people through the door but keeping them there and extending deals and then getting them to actually refer you to other people it clearly showing us what we were doing was working and and since then, that's that's still probably one of our biggest ways of, of generating business. So absolutely, yeah. and I think it shows as well. You know, since day one, we've we've never actually lost a landlord. Um, one house we did lose, but that went through a sale. Um, and the guy was just wanting to manage it on his own. But since day one, we've never actually you know lost a landlord, and I think that just shows the service. Same with some of our tenants. You know, we've had tenants with us now. We moved into our very first ten bedroom, and they're still with us today. I completely agree on 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 everything that you've just said there, and you know, a lot of the successes we had were, were for those very same reasons. I remember, and we do this too. You know, you know bringing a new project on and, and creating a great home and getting the tenants in and pleasing all of these people was actually the focus. The money bit and you know the ability to earn whatever we did was obviously important, but it wasn't the be all and end all. Yeah. And actually, I think because it wasn't, it made the conversations with everybody easier. It, helped build the right culture it helped build the right brand and all of that and i've seen this with you guys and for me this is absolutely why you guys are flying it all starts to compound yeah and it's difficult to pull it all apart and say you know that brought that deal and that brought that deal and i think people just getting started don't realize this but there's there's a lot more involved to to bringing deals on and it's quite eclectic and if you do all of this stuff in the right way and in the right balance landlords will come forward you know there will be deals to find and again it is a really really scalable model because of this specifically on the deals joe can you give us a quick summary of how you actually go about finding deals now on a month-to-month basis you know where do your deals come from i would say a lot of deals come through where the mouth like i've just said but also um content marketing so kind of educational updates to landlords every single month and then obviously they see us as a really credible source who understand the industry, understand the local market. They call us and then, then it's a case of deciding whether they go down the rent-to-rent route or whether they go down the agency route. But it's definitely good having the agency as well because landlords will naturally call us because they want us to manage properties. And then we can say, well, the property probably needs a refurbishment or it probably needs X, Y, and Z. We can do all of this for you and it'll be going down this level of service instead. Yeah, we, we built this this into the business, didn't we? I love this idea of call it like a, almost like a splinter product, but we know that a lot of landlords are turned off by the idea of, of guaranteed rent and rent to rent. Yeah, for a few reasons, but probably on the most part, in honesty, because they see it as being a less profitable option for them, which yeah. is understandable and probably is the truth on the most part. If you discard the fact that actually, if you don't know what you're doing or you, you give it to the wrong agent or you put the wrong tenants in, it can cost you a lot more in the long run. But um, I think having that, that splinter product there, what you offer a management service, 
landlords are more likely to call because that's an option you can see their property if the property isn't manageable and we we're really clear aren't we about the stuff that we we want to manage we don't want to manage substandard stuff so if they're prepared to do the work great if they're not don't have the ability time funds whatever we can do it but then it looks more like a rent to rent agreement and i think that that works incredibly well you know, i don't know anyone other than us sort of just doing this sort of thing and, and kind of presenting the i suppose the service offering in that way and of course your the content marketing that you mentioned here that's the content marketing that you do with us at the roadmap and it's the same it's the content that i write that we send out every single month and have done for years and years and years and it does work if, if you're really really consistent with it um i think for me like just just to sort of summarize what you guys have done you guys have have covered all bases and you've thrown a lot of mud at the walls and and a lot of that has, has eventually stuck and i just don't think many people are prepared to do that but i think if you do and it actually isn't a huge leap from sort of trying to do the basics to actually doing what you guys are doing and really investing in trying to build your business it can be a fantastic model and i think just to add to this and again just some additional credit to you guys you guys have done this in one of the biggest cities in the country with a huge and very 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 established hmo market with lots of high street agents you guys found a crack you've opened it up and built a fantastic business for you which obviously you know has has a huge potential now so i think that's tough to do that is that is not easy to do and i think that's quite an exciting idea for anyone listening today likes the idea of building their own portfolio can see that rent to rent is a great option to be able to do that um i think this is quite an inspiring episode because it clearly can be done let's talk about mentorship what sort of a role has mentorship played and you guys are on the mastermind as well you're part of our mastermind you're key members of our mastermind what has being you know um part of a, a mastermind group and, and sort of having a mentor done for you i think in any business uh but especially like a rent to rent moment so many different moving parts there can be small moment or moments where they're only small decisions but it can make a big change in regards to the path that you go down and i think having someone to bounce the idea off who's already been there and done the same thing that's for me the biggest thing yeah absolutely i think without having you there as a mentor for us as as like i don't think we've got as far as we have you know there's decisions in our business which we've you know turned and flipped on its head and that's made a massive difference to our bottom line and our and our growth i think you know regardless of the size i think having a mentor will be a huge part of the business forever yeah i think you could leave it 20 years if you wanted to and make all the mistakes yourself all the expensive mistakes but for us we just wanted to go as quickly as possible with someone who knew exactly what was what taken what yeah. it took it was the same for me it was i saw it as a shortcut to get where i wanted to mm. i actually saw it as a much cheaper exercise of getting where i wanted to do as well mm. hopefully avoiding all of the mistakes and um it gave me a lot of the confidence that i didn't have especially when i started out there was a lot of a lot of self-belief that i hadn't developed yet and i felt that you know as you guys were talking about through the process of building the business you learn and you you, you, know, you grow a thicker skin and you do have to deal with difficult tenants and difficult landlords and problems and you get better at doing all of that so you know i i, I see that and i see it with all of our masterminders and all of my mentees there's there's just so much benefit of being able to just lean on somebody else who's already been there done it and yeah probably has a solution to whatever problem that you've got which is probably quick and probably quite painless so i totally get that so i think that that brings us on really nicely to what we hinted at at the beginning of today's episode which is something completely new i'm very very excited about this something that i wish we could have brought much sooner but you know it just wasn't the right time and i just didn't have the capacity but you guys are doing so well and you know we've worked so closely together um and i trust you so implicitly we have now finally put together a plan a service that we can offer to help our community members who are interested in rent to rent really excited about this so Liv, do you want to tell us a little bit more we're going to be launching this i think next week to everybody so tell everyone a little bit about what what we're about to bring to the roadmap so we are bringing a um, both us and Andy have partnered up to bring a rent to rent masterclass and mentorship. Um, I think the masterclass already went live on the roadmap, but now we're doing it something um, whereby we can help people who are starting off or people who've maybe got a bit of an insight into rent to rent, but have maybe done other courses and kind of just want that hands on one to one 
um, health, basically, pretty much everything that we had when we started, whereby, you know, we're on hand, you know, um, calls, monthly calls, setting goals, trying to achieve them, um, and basically just being your helping hand to get, get going and get started, basically. I think all of that good stuff that we talked about, you know, mentorship, you know, that handholding, that confidence, the skill and experience to show people how to do it in the right way, figuring out where to invest, figuring out how to actually stack deals up, stacking rent to rent deals up is really quite different. You know, the important stuff like the paperwork, the contracts, negotiating deals and all of that stuff and the stuff that scares people, you know, it scares a lot of people off from, from doing it. Some people unfortunately get it, get it wrong. So I think it's really exciting that now we have got a very dedicated mentorship program. You guys are going to be running for us. Um, dedicated to rent to rent. So for anybody listening today who would like to talk to Joe and Liv about this, you're very early. There are a limited number of spaces because there's only one Joe and there's only one Liv, but drop an email to info at the HMO roadmap uk. Let us know that you're interested and we can get some more information over to you. Before we wrap up today's episode then guys, I think there's some exciting stuff coming at J-O, but it might not be J-O anymore. Tell us a little bit about kind of the, the evolution of your business now. I'm really excited about this. I know I've been involved in the process, but I want you guys to tell us all about it. Um, so we're currently going through a rebrand. Uh, when we first started, we just called ourselves J-O Property Group, which is very original. You know, it's just our initials, um, but kind of at the start, which is what we'll touch on. Obviously, if you are interested in, and we get talking about starting your rent and rent business, but, you know, at the start, it was just, let's just set up, get a limited company, get what we need, and let's just go for it. Whereas now, we're building more of a brand, we're building more of an agency, and we thought we need something which really suits exactly who we are and what we do. And we're going through a rebrand, we're completely changing our name, we're changing colours, we're changing everything. It's been such a long process. We have to wait for the trademark. You know, we got let down on the name that we wanted, but we finally made it. And I think in two weeks' time, we're going to be called something different. But yeah, that's that's what's happening here. No longer Great. JO Property Group. I'm super, super excited. Obviously, I, I've had a bit of a sneak peek and can tell everyone that it looks flipping brilliant. Um, can't wait to see you unleash this onto the Liverpool market. And um, I think since you were last on, I think you went and won your award as well. I can't remember when our last episode was, but I'm pretty sure you won your award between now and then, did you? Yeah? We yeah. did, yes. Um, so that was at the HMO Awards last year, and we won the Best Master Lease Operator, um, otherwise known as Rent to Rent, uh, which was a huge achievement. It was a brilliant night, and we were we were absolutely over the moon with that. I think there was about 377 nominations and about 18 winners, um, and we were one of them, which which was crazy just after three That's years. Fantastic. but. Yeah. Well, it, it was great to see you see you up there on the on the stage getting that that award, which was incredibly well deserved. But yeah, I think if if anybody needed a, a rubber stamp on how great a job you guys have done building a rent to rent business and how qualified you are to actually talk about this and now teach and coach people on it, there you go. So um, incredibly excited about what what the next year has in store for you guys. Can't wait to get you on the podcast. Now that we are officially in partnership, I'm sure we're going to be doing some more episodes on the show. Um, but I've won. I'm really, really looking forward to, to seeing where the business goes over the next 12 months. Thank you for coming on to the show, guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. And just again, for everybody listening in today, if you want to catch up or speak to Joe and Liv about their mentorship program, drop us an email to info at thehmoroadmap.co.uk. Joe and Liv will get straight back to you.